What is going on guys, Eagle Aquatics back here and in today's video I'm going to be coming at you with another fish update. I'm going to be updating you guys on all the fish in the reef tank. Uh, I got a new one since the last video. Uh, you guys have probably seen them around to see some of the live streams and stuff like that. But uh, I'll just be updating you on how all, you, all these guys are doing and our, my recommendations on some of them and how some of them are growing. And before we get into the videos guys, um, I want to give a special shout out to this company Luxburg. It's like an Amazon based company. They make screw in high quality uh, refugium lights and plant growing lights if, like horticulture and stuff like that. And they also make, make uh, some like, you know, like, kind of like the black box uh, LED lights too. So they were kind enough to send me a few of these, the PAR 38. They're 18 watts. They screw right into one of these, uh, I don't even know what you call these. They're for like reptile cages and stuff like that. But this is like five bucks. And this light, I mean, it's it's a deal for what you get, honestly. For a smaller refugium or even one like mine, it lights most of it. If I had it a little higher, it would, it would light the whole thing. But uh, reviews are really good on it on Amazon. And uh, I've been using this for almost a week now. I've seen a little growth on my Chato. And uh, the color on this light is really, really good. The secret colors to refugium lights are the pink and the purple and the blue mixed in. It's, I don't know what it is. I've tried white light, I've tried other stuff. It's, it doesn't work like the pink, the pink and the blue light mixed. It's just something, it's one of the rays that makes the plants grow and that's what you need to export uh, nutrients out of the system. Now, refugiums are, I believe they are the most, if you're going to have a fully blown reef tank and want to keep SPS and stuff like that, this is the single most important filtration method I believe you could possibly implement into your reef tank because it, it will take care of the nutrients for you. It reduces nitrates, it reduces phosphates, it reduces any of that crap in the water and you need a good light to grow the algae. Uh, I believe this, heck, for the money. If you, if you want to experiment, experiment with Chato and Refugiums and don't want to spend that huge money for that uh, AI, the Fuge Light or the Kessel, the big Kessel, um, $25 gets you a screw in, uh, 18 watt plant grow light. I believe it's, pr it's a killer deal for what you get. It's actually pretty high quality. Uh, it's called the Power 38 by Luxburg. You get them on Amazon, they're only 25 bucks. I mean, you can't beat that. LEDs, uh, it's waterproof. You splash water, put it in a, a splashy environment in the sump, so water splashes up on it, it's not gonna affect it. Uh, really, really good light, I believe. And they gave me a discount code if you wanna use it on Amazon or their website. You get 15% off one of these lights if you wanted to try it. Uh, you have to use discount code SHADOGO, that's C-H-A-E-T, O G O. Uh, type it in when you check out on Amazon or their company website. I'm pretty sure they have a website, and uh, I, I think you guys will be pretty pleased with this. If you, yeah, I think this will work on a lot of different size refugiums, uh, Chato stuff like that. It's got good reviews on Amazon. So heck, for 25 bucks, even less than that when you use it 15 percent off, you get a decent light. Guys, now we'll move on to the fish. So I think I have a total of uh, around 10 fish in here in the 125. So I'll bring you around. I might as well start out with the new one. This is a uh, cleaner wrasse. See, they get kind of a bad rap in the hobby because I, I guess uh, people have trouble keeping them and they don't have very long lifespans. But uh, I believe they're like dirt cheap saltwater fish and uh, they can be really easy to care for. You just gotta get them to eat frozen food and stuff like that. But this one uh, eats frozen food like crazy. He also eats the seaweed and stuff like that and he's been doing really good. Uh, sometimes he annoys the other fish but that's to be expected with these guys. Uh, he, he's not a problem at all though. They're really, really cool. I might add uh, another one or two. I think they're, I just think they're awesome fish. They're only like 15, 20 bucks. I get them for $15. And these things are just awesome. Good for smaller tanks, uh, bigger tanks, tanks with bigger fish like tangs and stuff like that. They'll help out cleaning them. And uh, they do a really good job. Now I've been told they don't have very long lifespans. That's probably why people don't tend not to like these guys. But uh, I think they're awesome. For the price, 
I mean, if they live a couple years, that's that's a steal. I mean, 20 bucks gets this awesome looking fish. Uh, really, really cool. Then we got the old uh, hippo tang back there. Fast, by far the fastest growing fish in my tank. This thing grows like a weed. Uh, if you go back a couple months to my past videos, I got this guy, he was like the size of a quarter or like a silver dollar or something like that. Uh, now, he's just this giant fish. He's like five inches long, five, yeah, I would say about five inches long. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why these guys aren't really recommended for any tank under 100 gallons because they grow so fast and I'm starting to figure that out. And they eat a ton too, but they're really, really cool. Look at the colors on this guy too. Insane. But really peaceful tang. They don't cause any trouble. Uh, really, really easy to fish to care for. They also get a bad rap for being really susceptible to ick too. But I haven't found that to be the cause. I have never seen this guy get a lick of ick on him. So I don't have too many problems with that. The other tang I have in here is this Mimic chocolate tang. Mimic or chocolate tang. Not the most common tang in the hobby actually. These, not too many people uh, keep these guys as far as I've seen. Um, I think they're a super cool fish. Uh, really cool, they start all yellow. They start out, juveniles are all yellow like this guy. And then as they grow older, they, uh, they transform into different colors and stuff like that. I mean, the main body stays more of a yellow, the yellowish tannish, but the fins turn like brown to like a black. It's really, really cool. This guy's fins are starting to get darker as he grows up. I've had him for a while too. This guy does just fine. They have a crazy appetite for uh, for seaweed. It's nuts, but uh, but really cool. You know, the hippo tang doesn't bother him. He doesn't bother the hippo tang either. So they're they're pretty good. Really, really peaceful tangs too. I didn't really want any of the uh, yellow tangs and purple tangs because I used to have a purple tang. Really, really aggressive, really mean. And I've heard the yellow tangs could be the same and I've witnessed that too. Uh, didn't want that in this tank again. And that guy's also, remember the bristle tooth tangs, they uh, eat all the algae and everything, so that's really cool and helpful. Here's my oldest fish, the maroon clown. This guy's still going strong, a big female maroon clown. Uh, crazy about this one, usually when they grow up they're like extremely aggressive and stuff like that. This guy's really peaceful. He doesn't bother anything. Even with the anemone I used to have, he was still, he didn't bother a thing. He's pretty crazy. But this guy's huge. He doesn't really like the camera. But a giant fish. He's probably, he's getting there to be full grown. I think they could get about six inches. This guy's probably at about four or five, if I had to guess but really nice looking fish. Probably one of my favorites in the channel mascot right there. Uh, Blue green chromis, the only one I've ever been able to keep. Tried to put a school in here. This guy killed them all. Originally from uh, Petco, rescued him because he was the last one. Maybe that's because he was a murderer, but who knows. But here he is, really cool fish. If you could keep a school of these, that'd be awesome. I tried, but this guy did not want friends. That's for sure. But a really, really cool fish. Here's some Melanaris wrasse. Semi-reef safe wrasse. He will eat inverts and stuff like that. I'm not able to keep too many hermit crabs, but I still have about five or six of them in here because they're smart and only come out at night. And this guy's not around. Uh, otherwise, he'll try to eat them easily. But this guy, he's getting pretty big too. He's constantly, rats are some of the best fish you could have in reef tanks because they're constantly looking around for pests and stuff like that. And they eat any worms and or weird crap like nudibranchs or flatworms. This guy uh, keeps control of all those guys. Really awesome fish. You can't beat the colors. They're not even that expensive either. Just a really awesome fish. I'd love to have more rats in here, maybe, maybe a few more. But uh, this guy is kind of aggressive towards other rats. But uh, other than that, he's completely reef safe though. They only really bother smaller inverts. That's it. Ah, uh, what else we got in here? We got the blue jaw triggerfish. This is gonna be the next care guide right here. Oh, let me see. He's over here. You don't like the camera. There he is. Blue jaw triggerfish. When you first get these guys, they're very, very shy. 
Mine hid for like a month. Didn't even eat. And then he started to come out. But these are, uh, once once they, they get acclimated to the system, the tank, they become really active. Uh, really, really cool fish. This guy eats like crazy. Uh, they don't grow very fast. This guy hasn't grown too much since I've had him. But uh, really, really cool fish to have. One of the only reef safe trigger fish, completely reef safe. I've never had him bother a thing. Not even shrimp. I got a coral bandit shrimp in here and he never goes after him. Don't go after coral or anything. Rare, uh, rare with trigger fish, this is a male. The males have the yellow highlights and the blue chins. But that's him. He does a very peaceful fish too. Like I said, kind of skittish, but really cool. There's a one-eyed coral beauty angelfish. Really awesome. When I first get, got this guy, he had an eye-eating parasite. Took out his one eye when I got him a year ago. So he's only had one eye ever since, but he does just fine. That's a crazy thing. He's not phased by it, it doesn't seem. But uh, really, really cool fish. Uh, my opinion, people say it's a hit or a miss with these guys in Reef Tank. I find that to be, uh, I mean, still kind of true, but it's rare to have one that picks that coral. Usually 90, 90% of the time, these guys aren't gonna bother a thing. And they're pretty cheap and you get a lot of colors for the money too. Really, really cool, hardy fish too. Peaceful, he doesn't really bother anything. And the colors are just insane on these guys. What else? I, I'm missing the puffer fish. Wait, where is he? There's Puff up there. He does not like the camera for uh, some reason, but he is probably the most personal little fish in this tank. Every time he comes up to the tank, he's always begging for food and everything. Really, really cool fish. The blue eyes on these guys are insane. And the juveniles, I'm uh, starting to prove it. They don't bother inverts or a coral. I've never seen this guy go after anything. Uh, no coral or anything. He does really good in here. He's only like three or four inches long. This is a juvenile one. And they do not grow fast, it's weird. I, I thought when I first got him uh, a couple months ago, like five, six, seven months ago, that uh, he would go after coral and all this stuff. But uh, he hasn't. And even, I mean, it's worth a try. They're not very expensive as juveniles. And even if they do go after inverts and stuff like that, they're really slow and they're always up at the top. Usually when you're feeding, they're easy to catch if you ever have to remove them for that reason. But uh, really, really, really cool fish. Had to have them. They don't grow fast either. So you could keep one in a, like a 120, 125 uh, for a while. I'm not too sure how big it'll get or how long it'll take them to get fully sized or maxed out in size, but we'll see. When, you, when there's no food around, he's kind of lazy. But uh, when you present food, this guy goes nuts. Again, very, very peaceful fish. Nothing bothers him. He minds his own business. Really, really good uh, candidate for a reef tank, I would say. Believe it or not, I'm one of the, like, the only people on YouTube that have a puffer fish inside of a fully blown reef tank. But this guy does just fine. He's awesome. All right, guys, there is the white-tailed dotty back. That's the last fish. He hides in the rocks a lot. Uh, he's not as sociable as the other fish. He doesn't come out as much, but he's pretty cool looking. Not a very common dotty back, uh, but a really cool fish. I mean, like all dotty backs, they're gonna be a little aggressive towards other fish, but to none of these bigger guys, he doesn't mess around with any. It's when I add new fish, he kind of, he's kind of aggressive to them, but uh, even like the little cleaner wrasse, he went after him a couple times, but even after that, it's nothing. He's not gonna cause much harm. But he's a pretty cool fish to have. And not a lot of people have them. I got a care guide on him too. You can see his tail right there. Pretty cool. I like dotty backs and bassets. They're a pretty cool fish. Uh, and might as well include this guy, big coral bandit shrimp. I don't know if you can see him in there. Yeah, big dude. Huge coral bandit shrimp. Best shrimp. If you have more aggressive species like trigger fish and porcupine puffer that could possibly go after inverts, best shrimp to have is a coral bandit shrimp because they could actually defend themselves with the claws. Great, great shrimp to have. Very hardy and they go after all types of food too. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Follow me on Instagram at Eagle Aquatics. Subscribe, like, comment, leave any questions below. You guys know I answer all of them and uh, I'll see you next time.